All right, let's get it popping. Does anyone say that anymore? I don't care because the Australian Open draw has been released and we're going to get into it. And this is one of my favorite things to do. The show at the tippy top of a major tournament. We're going to break it down. We're going to see where the seeds have fallen. Who's got the best chance to make it through to the final? We've got a beautiful venue down in Melbourne. We've got Djokovic coming for major number 3,000. We've got Alcaraz trying to win his third. We've got Sinner in the mix. Could he do something? And unfortunately, we don't have Rafa Nadal. But we'll see him at the French, I'm sure. This is The Slice. Welcome to the Australian Open 2024 draw preview. Let's go. All right. Welcome back to The Slice, you faithful people. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. I hope all of your guys' years has started well, like mine has. I played tennis today and hockey. Very Canadian. I'm Canadian, if you didn't know. And if it's your first time here, I appreciate you subscribing. New studies have been released that shows if you subscribe to The Slice on YouTube and follow me on Twitter or The, the Slice on Twitter, you become a better tennis player. So I know that about 65% of you actually play tennis. and You guys could become better by subscribing. Appreciate your support. Let's get into it. The draw is out. We got it right here. And the seeds, this is always the big thing for us. Where did the seeds fall? Uh, we will look at that. I'm going to go spend more time today on the men's than the women's. I just did not have time with the way my life is going right now to get to the women's, but I will be looking through it as well in this video. Let's start with the men's where the draws are sat. On the top, we've got Djokovic. So if the quarterfinal setup, as we always do, with top eight seeds, and then we'll break it down quarter by quarter, routes to the final, Djokovic, Alcaraz, Medvedev, Sinner, and the Dark Horses, and the round one crazy matches. We're going to break it all down. Starting with the quarterfinal setup, we've got Djokovic sit to pass one and seven seed could play in the quarterfinals. Then we've got Sinner on the top as well with Djokovic could play Rublev number five seed in the quarterfinals. So Sinner, Djokovic, Sinner and Djokovic obviously played a couple of matches at the end of last year at the ATP finals. Uh, Sinner winning one in the round robin, Djokovic winning the other one in the final. So that's if that semifinal were to happen, that would obviously just be amazing and the best possible semifinal on the top half. Um, bottom half, we got Runa at the eight seed and Medvedev could play in the quarterfinals, the three seed. And then we've got Zverev could play Carlitos Alcaraz in the bottom quarter in the quarterfinals. So yeah, that's pretty interesting to me. The top four guys who we talked about coming into this tournament and this season really are Djokovic, Alcaraz, Medvedev, and Sinner. Who, you know, are those four guys going to continue to be at the top of the tournament? I think all four of them can play amazing on this court. Well, I know Djokovic can. Um, Medvedev has been in the final here a couple of times. Alcaraz didn't play last year. And the year before that, he was not what he is now. So this is really his first real chance to show out in his professional career at the, at the Australian Open, which is pretty amazing. I believe he lost to Berrettini in 2022. So... Wow, yeah, that's a lot of excitement to watch with Alcaraz here. And then we've got Sinner, yeah, like I said, against Djokovic on the top. And Sitsipas, Djokovic's potential rematch of last year's final. So what do you guys think of the quarterfinals, how those are set up? To me, that's pretty interesting. Let's go, though, into the routes to the final. I know this is pretty small, but let's just take... We'll we'll start it for, for Djokovic and Alcaraz. We'll leave the, the draws up here, and then we will... Not have it up for the next two, but we got Djokovic. He will play a qualifier in the first round, and then he'll play either Pullman's or Poprin, and two Aussies. Gonna have the crowd against them. They have a history in Australia. We all know this. Um, and then in the third round, he could play either Andy Murray, Thomas Echeverry, or Gael Monfils. So a pretty wide range of players and different play at places in their career there. Um, in the fourth round, he could play Ben Shelton. Hello, 
the phone, I'm picking, I'm answering the phone and I'm hanging it up. Ben Shelton or Adrian Manorino, the French belly dancer, bald man, sophisticated monk. So those are two opposite ends of the spectrum, but fans will be looking for that Shelton Djokovic rematch after the drama, the drama, the sizzling drama at the U S open. If you don't remember Djokovic hung up the phone. That's all. That was not a close match. Maybe this one will be closer. Who knows? On the quick courts at the Australian Open with a serve like Shelton's, that's that's something at least. Then we go to the quarterfinals. Um, Djokovic could either play Fritz or Sitsipas, as we talked about. He could play a few other players as well. Um, if we look at it, he could play... Yeah, I mean, he could play Sarandolo's in there, the 22nd seed. Lorenzo Musetti, the 25th seed. Sits past the 7th seed, who's playing Berrettini in the first round. I mean, that's just an insane first round matches, which we'll get to. I jumped the gun. I jumped the gun. So then Djokovic could play, if he gets through Fritz or Sitsipas, he could play Sinner then, that's the big matchup, or Rublev, and then in the final, either Alcaraz or Medvedev or somebody, some other Cinderella run that would be happening at that point. Let's go to... Alcaraz now on the bottom. He'll play Frenchman Richard Gasquet in the first round and then either Dan Evans or Lorenzo Sonego in the next round. Those are two pretty tricky players. If Alcaraz is at full flight, though, really, I don't think either of them have the, the game to hang with him at anymore. Um, Bublik, 31st seed, or Shang or McDonald in there. So, you know, Kind of a medium level coming th through these first rounds for three rounds for Alcaraz, but there's definitely tricky players, even starting in, in the first round with Gasquet, obviously. Um, but I mean, can you just imagine if, you know, Alcaraz, the height of testosterone, the height of youth, could he lose to someone like Richard, Richard Gasquet, who is just, he's like 40 years old? It's just, that would be, that would be hard to imagine if Alcaraz was healthy. Then Alcaraz could either play Jan Leonard Struff or Tommy Paul, or Jack Draper. Don't sleep on Jack Draper. Um, those are tough opponents. Those are definitely tough opponents. And then as we go on into the next group, I believe he could either play, I have it written down, he could play yeah, either Rude, who's now ranked 11th, the 11th seed, or Zverev in the quarterfinals, as we talked about. And then in the semifinals, either Medvedev or Runa. Uh, and then in the finals, Djokovic or center or another Cinderella run. Um, so yeah, what do we think about that? I think that's kind of like a medium to me. That's a medium rare stake all the way through medium level at the beginning of toughness. And then it gets, you know, from the fourth round off for, for all crowds, it's, it's serious opponents. Um, but it's, it's, to me, it's always up to all It's, it's really up to all except for Medvedev and Djokovic uh, and center we see when we've seen him play his best he's he's really untouchable it seems like uh for most of the tour and then if he's not then it's open season a little bit so there's a bit more of a swing there then you would like to see if you were his coach i think but i mean we'll see we still have such a small sample size that it's really hard to tell um now let's go through the center medvedev quarter so center could play or will play botic van de Zanskulp in the first round and then pablo kachin and then either Sebastian Baez or JJ Wolf. And then Kachanov or Tiafo. So that beginning to me is Botic van der Zanskulp can be tricky. Kachin should be fine. Baez, Wolf should be fine also. Uh, Kachanov, Tiafo gets obviously more difficult there. Um, depending on how those guys play, that can obviously be harder called. Kachanov, you know, has played good tennis in the last couple of years. Demonauer or Rublev in the quarterfinal there. He can hit th bigger than both of those guys, but obviously Rublev is great. And Demon Hour with the home crowd, with you know the, the way he's feeling, he beat Djokovic already this year. That is potentially a tough quarterfinal. And then Djokovic or sits a pass. Djokovic obviously being the ult you know the ultimate test on this court um, and the match we would love to see. What do you guys think? I think that's a fairly you know easier draw. To, you know, in my in out of the out of you know, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like Djokovic's first four, you know, four rounds are fairly easy. 
even the quarterfinals, he owns both those guys, Fritz and Sitsipas. So really, the semifinals, Sinner could play, you know, could could cause some issues for sure. Obviously, with the way he's played, they're pretty close there. Uh, and then I don't think Rublev really is. So to me, Djokovic has a fairly nice draw so far. Medvedev, or sorry, Sinner is nice as well. Uh, Okaraz, a little bit tougher. But really, these four have separated themselves so much. I'm not really saying any are super, super tough. Quarterfinal or qualifier for Medvedev in the first round, Rusevari in the second round, Felix Auge Aliassim in the third round, who's now ranked 27 or the seeded 27, which is pretty crazy. And then either Alejandro Davidovic, Fukina, or Dimitrov, who's been playing great, Hercatch or Runa in the quarterfinals, Alcaraz Zverev in the semifinals, or and then Djokovic in the, or Sinner in the final. So that's actually to me the toughest route of, of the four of the, uh, you know, of the four. You got FAA Felix Ajelio Seam in the third round, who he played in the quarterfinals or semifinals in 2021. I forget, but Felix, obviously, we know he has got top 10 talent for sure. He's been there, he's been in the ATP finals before. So that's a pretty tricky player to play in the third round, if you ask me. So, who's coming out of there? Who has the hardest draw? I think Alcaraz has an okay draw. I think Djokovic has an okay draw. He's smiling. Um, the question will be how's his wrist? Obviously, back at the AT or the United Cup, he was having wrist issues. Have have those healed. You're hitting the thing is you're still hitting almost every day leading up to tournaments after an injury like this. So I don't know. Like your wrist is an obviously your forearm is a is an important part of of the game. I don't even need to say that. And has he taken a few days off? I don't know. I don't know. Um, and unfortunately, again, Rafa will not be. Um, at the Australian Open with an injury. He, in, he an injury sustained at the Brisbane International will force Rafa Nadal to miss the Australian Open. Um, yeah. I'm trying to see. I, can't, I forget exactly what happened, but he said, but, but, you know, his body isn't ready to come back. It, it's just, a, they say, uh, a torn hip muscle is what happened for him. And the man just obviously can't catch a break. Sorry. The injuries that he's had, you know, come back from in 2023 to now, I get that you're training, you're playing hard, you're playing well um, at the, in, in, in practice, but you cannot, I think it just does go up a level when you're playing. And he said, basically, you, just, you know, it feels like you kickstart your body. Wasn't ready. He's going to miss the Australian open, which sucks for the fans. Um, I was very excited to see what he would have in the tank, but he's going to do what he's always had to do, which is give up the now take away miss time now to try and get better later. Um, so we wish him the best for that. Dark horses. Or round one mayhem. Let's do round one mayhem. Round one mayhem. There's four crazy matches that I'm think, talking about. The craziest to me is Sitsipas versus Berrettini in the first round. I mean, who would have thought? Sitsipas been in the top four before, has been thought he was like the next major champion before. Berrettini's just been super injured, super unlucky. They're playing in the first round. Berrettini's not seated. He's been a Wimbledon finalist. He's been a guy that you talk on a quick surface like the Australian Open open about being a contender uh, first round. That's crazy. That's unfortunate. Um, who else? We've got Felix Auger-Aliassim versus Dominic Team. Like, actually heartbreaking for me. I love both those guys. I'm, feel, I'm Canadian. Felix, Team. I would love him to get back there. 2020 uh, Australian Open. He's playing in the final against, against Djokovic. Um, just craziness, I th or at least I think it was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was 2020, and you know now he's he's struggling, and he's still been struggling. He struggled for a long time now to get back to where he was, which might not ever happen. We got, and then there's two more that are, just are like great matches: Sabu with Wild versus Rublev. That could be fiery, of course. Both are you know potentially violent, very uh, animated people. And then we got Round at Canadian versus Demon Hour. Dark horses for me. Grigor Dimitrov is 
top of my list for dark horses. He won in Brisbane. He made the final of Paris Bercy, Perry Bercy, and he's just playing great tennis again. So I hope that he can keep that up in this five set format. Um, but yeah, he's a dark horse to contend. Again, I don't think anyone outside of these top four guys will win the tournament. Um, it would really shock me if it wasn't Djokovic or Alcraz. But really, outside of the top four, the dark horses kind of don't matter to me because it's 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 more like who's gonna the dark horse. The threat is to make a run. I have Dimitrov, Dimitrov there. I have Holger Runa there. Some people in my 2024 season preview thought I was throwing shade on Holger Runa by not mentioning him as a potential major champion for 2024. Now I don't know if he's a major champion this year. Clay, you know. On on at the French Open, he's a dog. You do not want to play him on the clay. But he's a dark horse to make a run at this tournament. You don't want to play him. He is in the Medvedev quarter. Um, so yeah, he could he could do some things for sure. And who else was I thinking? It's Zverev. He's the number six seed. Zverev had a you know a pretty solid twenty twenty three working back, getting his ranking back. Um, so yeah, he's done well. And that is, he's a guy that, you know, again, a few years ago, it's crazy how much has changed. You're looking at like, this guy is about to win majors, etc. Never happened. Let's go now look at the women's draw top to bottom. Svantec Kennan first round two former or two. Yeah. I guess technically former major champions. Svantec still number one in the world. Obviously, really very uh, at the top of her game versus Ken, and that's super interesting in the first round. Another super interesting first round, Danielle Collins versus Angelique Kerber. Former Kerber, former multiple-time major champion, and Collins, former top top player. Neither are seeded. They are, will play in the first round. That is pretty, pretty intense top four <laughs> players in the draw there, if you ask me. So we got, yeah, the Shriatek quarter. We've got Shriatek. We've got Vondrusova, the Wimbledon champion. And then we've got Rybaikina playing Karolina Pliskova in the first round. Hello. And then we got Buksa playing Blinkova after that. I love that name, Blinkova. Blink. And then, so in the Rybaikina quarter, We've got, or sorry, the Jessica Pagula quarter. Wait, what? Yes, no, sorry. The Alina Rybakina quarter. We've got Jess Pagula. And then we've got the Maria Sakari at the eighth seed in the Coco Golf quarter. Layla Fernandez could play Coco Golf in the third round. That would be nice. Anjabur, the sixth seed in the bottom quarter with the number two seed, Arena Sabalenka. So I'm excited and interested to see how this tournament plays out. How, you know, 2024 or 2023 was super interesting with Sabalenka getting her first major in Australia, Coco Golf getting her first major in the U.S. Open, Von Drusova getting her first major, obviously, uh, at the at Wimbledon out of nowhere, and then uh, and then Sviantek taking home the French, taking care of business. So, how's this tournament going to shake out? I don't know. It's wide open. It's a little sorry. It's not wide open. It's wide open at the top. There's a number of girls who could make a run for sure. We'll see how. Shvantec plays. I'm excited to see if she's still going to, you know, she wasn't, you know, one out of three majors last year, not as dominant as she has been. Um, and Rybaikina, Sabalenka, Coco Goff are got to feel confident as well. Um, super interesting times. So that's the draw. That's a 20 minute show on the draw preview for the Australian Open. I'm excited for this tournament to get underway. The sleep clock is now on. I will not be getting lots of sleep in the next two weeks, which is a sacrifice, but we do it for the love of the game. That's what we do here on the slice. And I'll see you guys on Twitter 
That's my Twitter handle, at the slice Steven. You can follow me there for live tweeting during the matches while we stay up late and ruin our sleep together. Happy Australian Open, everyone. I can't wait for the tournament to start. We will see you when it does.